A new year means a new bullet journal. So in this video, I want to walk you through the setup of my journal for 2019 and also share a few thoughts on what I like about the bullet journal system and how it helps me stay productive. First off, if you've never heard of the bullet journal before, if this is somehow the first video you're watching on this topic, then it's essentially an analog way of uh, planning and writing to-do lists. At least that's what I use it for anyway. You can do it in any plain notebook you like. And what I love about it is how customizable it is. So you make your own spreads. You're not confined to like the exact height of a day in a you know pre-made planner or anything like that. It's meant to be uncomplicated and easy to quickly help you note stuff down that you need to remember or that you need to do so that you can just like get on with doing it. Uh, I will leave a link to a video in the description. You should definitely watch if you don't know about bullet journals yet. That's by the creator of the bullet journal method. It explains it much better than I do and I think you'll find it really useful to watch. But the cool thing about bullet journals is that everyone has their own way of doing them and I know that I watched a lot of videos like these when I was first getting started with using the bullet journal method just to get ideas for different spreads and how I might want to use it. So yeah, I hope that this video is useful to you for that reason. So with that said, let's get into it. I guess we should start with the book itself. So the first year that I started bullet journaling, I used the official Lokstrom bullet journal notebook. So it's one that like has bullet journal on the cover and it's got like a guide to stuff in it in, in the front. Um, but essentially it's a doctored notebook with numbers in the corner and some page markers. Last year I used a Baron Fig confidant for my bullet journal and I loved the quality of the notebook. The paper quality was much better than the Lokstrom in my opinion. Um, the cover was super nice with its linen feel to it and it was a really good size too. But I did find that I really missed having the page numbers and I missed having multiple page markers. So for that reason, I've gone back to Lohstrom for this year. This time it's not the official like bullet journal notebook, but it's just one of their dot grid notebooks with page numbers, which is all you really need. And I've gone for it in this bright yellow color because it's my like color of the moment and it just makes me happy. As you can see, the pages are like a nice creamy color with nice evenly spaced dots. Um, the paper is on the thinner side compared to the Baron Fig, so there is a bit of show through, but overall it's still a pretty good notebook and I like that it has two page markers here. I keep one in the month and one in the day, which I'll explain that in a second. I write in my bullet journal using a Muji gel pen. I just think these are really good pens. Someone recommended them to me when I first started bullet journaling and uh, I've not gone back. I've not tried anything else because I just love them so much. They write really smoothly. They don't run like out of ink midway through a line and I get the 0.7 nib in case you're interested. All right, so let's get into how I've set up this notebook itself. Um, I'll just like flip through my pages and show you what I've done so far. The first thing in my notebook and the reason why I went back to one with page numbers is the index. So this is where you essentially note the page that each like spread that you've used is on. I really like this because as I've set it up, as you'll see, there is this chunk of like not time sensitive pages, I guess is the way to explain it. Like they could be used at any month at the very beginning of the book, but sometimes midway through the year, I want to like do a project plan or something. So I'll take a page and do that. And I found that last year I couldn't find those pages again. I did a lot of like flipping through the book. Whereas this year I can just note down the page number that I did that on um, with a title and I'll be able to go and find it pretty easily. The first spread when we get into the notebook is the future log. So the future log is basically an overview of the whole year. And I do mine with six months to a spread just to give myself some room. I draw this little calendar at the side and then note events and things that are happening um, in that month. So it's a good way for me to check like when trips are happening, when are my busy times, when am I perhaps a little bit more available. A couple of things to note here. One is that I will put down trips that I'm taking in a month with a little triangle. That just helps me keep track of my busy months and like, you know, when I've got a lot on. And then I'll put um, important events happening that month with a star. In the calendar itself, I circle the days that are public holidays, bank holidays in England. So the days that I have off work and I'll put a square around dates that I'm taking as vacation day. As you can see here, there's a lot of underlines on all the dates in January, continuing into February, and that is because they underline all the days that I'm away from home. So I'm not gonna be back in London until February 10th. So that's, that's what all that's about. If you watched my video about 2019 goals, you'll know that this year I really wanna focus more on balance um, and being aware of how much time and energy a trip can take up aside from just the days that I'm away. So having this overview, seeing all these underlines together is a good way for me to be aware that this is a time when I'm perhaps not gonna be able to get as much done as if I was just at home in London in my usual space. Moving on, the next spread is also something that you will have heard about if you watch my goals video. This is my quarterly goals, which really probably should be called quarterly 
things I want to do. There's a lot I want to do this year and I've decided to break it up into quarters just to make things easier to focus on and see where they fit in. So this is a spread where uh, as more things come up I'll see which quarter is a little bit emptier and where I could fit them in. So that means that if I get an idea now, this month, uh, my quarter one is pretty full already, so I'm going to have to schedule it either for Q3 or Q4 when things are looking a little bit lighter. I haven't done this yet because it's still January, it's not the end of a quarter, that's that's March. Um, but at the end of each quarter I'm planning on doing a spread that like revisits these goals and noting down um, what went well, what I got achieved, what perhaps didn't go so well that I can um, work on for the next quarter. So doing those little check-ins with myself that I tend to do at the end of the year but keeping them up throughout the year so that I don't have to wait till the end of the year to do some self-improvement, you know. Next, I have a spread for my travel plans. This is something that I had in my 2018 notebook and I really liked. I go on a lot of trips and I find organizing trips really stressful. It's hard to keep straight in my mind, like, what have I booked, what haven't I booked? So this is a spread for all of that information. Um, I can keep track of the things that I still need to do and as I schedule more trips for my year this spread will get filled up with all of that. Another spread that I had in my 2018 bullet journal that I haven't put in this one was a habit tracker. I wanted to have a spread where I could track habits that I wanted to build and I started off with skateboarding, that was something that I wanted to work on last year. Uh, it turns out I didn't really use that habit tracker, I found it difficult to remember to flip back to it. Um, I don't know, Just it's just not the way I think and it's not the way I work. This year I'm trying, I guess it's kind of a habit tracker, more of a content tracker. It's this spread here with the amount of videos that I want to make for the year, the amount of vlogs and blog posts, emails, etc. that I want to make sure I produce. So as the year goes on I think it's going to be pretty satisfying to tick all this stuff off. This spread here is not really an active one, it's not one I see myself adding to, it's more of just a note. Um, for me to have there to refer to and remind myself of. I've copied this out of my 2018 journal. Partway through the year I sat down and had a good think about my career trajectory and what I wanted my career as a whole to encompass. Um, and this is what I came up with. So I've just put this in here for prosperity really. Um, I like seeing it, I like seeing it all laid out and reminds me why I'm doing what I'm doing and how the little things that I do fit into the larger whole. Okay, so now as we hit this first page marker here, we're getting into the month of January. So I make a spread like this at the start of each month. Um, and all of last year I was trying out something slightly different each month. And that's what I like about the bullet journal is that you create it as you go. So I haven't set up like February, March, April, all the way through the year yet looking like this. I will set it up on January 31st. I'll set up for February, you know what I mean? So then I can make tweaks to this as I go along and just like continually, continually refine it. Something I always do though, because I do quite like it, is have the dates and the days of the week on the side here with um, things brought in from that future log. So this is my trips and like places that I'll be, events that are happening, and again I've put a square around the days that I'm taking as vacation. This really helps to visualize when I'm coming into planning what I'm going to do each week. So as you can see here, this uh, third week of January is a really busy time, so I perhaps should make sure I get the stuff done that I want to this month before that happens, or be aware that I'm going to have to do it after. On this page next to it is where I plan what I'm going to do in each week of the month to, yeah, how many fit stuff in. So like I said, I can refer to this and make sure that I don't schedule too much for week three. This isn't something that I totally fill out at the start of a month. I sort of definitely fill out week one, but then we'll add to it as I go. You can also see up here focus and success. So um, the monthly focus is something that I've been doing for a while. Every month I'll write down like what the main focus is of the month, what's the number one thing, what's the number one priority. Previously my monthly focus has always been side project related, but something I want to try going into 2019 with my goal of having more balance in my life is to have like a personal focus as well as a side project focus. So this month the personal focus is my sister's wedding because she's getting married soon. In fact, by the time you see this video, she might already be married, so that's exciting. And then the success part is a new one for this year that I'm trying. These four things here are what it would take to call January a success in my eyes. So this is something that I will make sure I do at the start of every month is write down what I think success would look like. And then I can revisit at the end of the month and see what I achieved and feel good about myself if I have done them. And if I haven't done them, then it'll be a good lesson for me in scoping and in figuring out what's actually realistic to achieve. Then we get into the days, which is what the majority of my bullet journal ends up looking like by the end of the year. I just write the date and then I have two lists. The one on the left hand side is my work tasks. And then on the right hand side is my side project tasks, my life admin, like stuff I need to do outside of work. I follow what I think is a pretty regular bullet journal system for this. I just put a dot for a task and then I will cross off that dot when the task is done. I draw a little circle for an appointment or an event 
and then um, if I'm gonna write a note at that day then I'll just do like a little dash here as you can see <laughs> as you can also see I am not super um, neat when it comes to my bullet journal I'm not trying to make it the most beautiful thing in the world I'm trying to make it functional and so sometimes I do end up with like little drawings just to remind myself of an idea I had or I don't know my handwriting is barely readable to anyone other than me but that's okay because it's my bullet journal <laughs> so essentially I will continue doing this like writing the date and then my tasks for that day up until the next month and then I will set up for February um, in the middle of the month sometimes I might want to create an extra spread like say I'm about to ship a new web project and I just want to make sure I have one central checklist for my last like things I need to do all the touch-ups I need to make that's like a case when I might take over a page and just do that um, and that's why the page numbers are important for me because I can note what page that's on write it in the index and easily be able to find it um, to refer to a few days later for being such a digital person in general I am still really surprised that I have stuck with using the bullet journal method for so long and that it's actually been working really well for me uh, and I think the reason why is that when I write down a task by hand, I'm just more likely to do it than if I type it into a to-do list app on a computer or on my phone. Part of the reason for that, I think, is that seeing a task in my own handwriting and just the act of writing it down feels more like a commitment that I'm making to myself. But also I think it's the fact that I have my bullet journal sitting open on my desk next to me all day every day, as opposed to a to-do list app where it might get hidden by another window and another tab. Um, you have to actively go into the app to see it. This is just always there and it's always reminding me what I need to get done. Uh, also, you know, it's just super satisfying to cross stuff off in a notebook, much more satisfying than like checking something off digitally. And the reason I think the bullet journal works so well for me as opposed to just getting like a regular pre-made planner or diary is the customization that I can do with it, with, you know, setting my focus for the month, breaking down weeks, um, you know, breaking down my quarters. That's not stuff that necessarily comes in a regular planner or, or diary. And so that's where I really like that I can set up my own spreads and make it work exactly how I want. All right, this has been a very long video. Thank you for sticking with me. I hope you found it interesting seeing how I set up my bullet journal. It's super not pretty and like, you know, all these nice spreads that a lot of people do, but it's really functional and it really is um, a setup that helps me work towards my goals. So hopefully maybe that will help you out as well. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up, share it around with a friend who is thinking of trying out the bullet journal method. Maybe this will give them some ideas and show them that you don't need to be like an artist to make a bullet journal happen and make it work for you. If you use the bullet journal method as well I'd love to hear um, how yours compares to mine, what are some different spreads that you really love and like you know they're essential to you in your journal. Tell me down below in the comments because like I said this is a super customizable system and everyone does it differently so I'd love to hear about it. All right hope you have a good day I will see you in my next video and now I can go mark off film bullet journal video on my to-do list. <laughs>